Hello! And my waycam is broken, as I can see. It's... There we go. So yesterday I forgot to switch my uh, microphone and uh, today I forgot to uh, set my webcam properly. So that's a good start. Hello, good evening. Uh, my name is Yannickim, the French guy from Switzerland. And uh, we are uh, Thursday, August 5, um, 2021. And I'm uh, recording this live on Twitch, uh, just in case you're watching that later on, either on the, the VOD and on Twitch or on YouTube. Um, this is part three of my series uh, about Streamberry. So go back and, and watch um, uh, episodes, well, episode <laughs> streams one and two, uh, if you want to know what Streamberry will be and what we are doing here. So in a nutshell, Streamberry is going to be a kind of a stream deck implemented on a Raspberry Pi. Um, I'm going to use a Raspberry Pi with a 7-inch uh, touch screen. It will talk to um, a program, a server program on my PC, and that program is going to talk to OBS and run scripts and stuff like that. Um, two days ago, so Tuesday, I did a stream where I used Google Protobuf. Uh, Google protocol buffers to have the client talk to the server. Uh, let's uh, have a quick look at uh, what we got. So that's that's where we stopped almost uh, where we stopped um, Tuesday. I just added some stuff to get uh, uh, yes get rid of all the errors that I had um, during the last stream. And so now we have a, a server that, that can talk to the client, but we still haven't seen anything uh, graphical. So I thought it was time that we kind of forget about the um, network stuff for now. So I'm going to comment that. And I'm going to try and load some um, icons on push buttons and you know, try and see if I can push that button and have a, an action um, uh, somewhere, a login or in the console or something like that. And when we have that, then we can make multiple buttons. And when we have multiple buttons, of course, we can make those buttons uh, on the client talk to the server. So let's uh, get to it. Uh, so we're using i'm using a uh, pi cute 5 which is a cute 5 um implementation uh, wrappers it's a python wrappers around uh, cute 5 i'm i'm <laughs> yes i'm uh, i'm a bit tired but uh i'm going to manage um so let's uh, um it would have helped if i had commented the client and not the server but so there we go. The, that's the uh, client. My dog is making a lot of noise. Um, she, I'm sure she wants to participate uh, on the stream. <laughs> so, uh, PyChute 5. Yes, uh, as you can see uh, here, I, I have already imported some, uh, some stuff. I, I did some tests before the stream. So we're going to, um, well, do a, a basic... Um, by Q5 app just often. So let's let's add um, let's create an application. So an application is a Q application. It takes some arguments, but we don't care about that right now. We need a window, our main window for uh, for this application. So Q widget that should be enough. Um, I think we can do that, and we will have something already. Uh, so I did some tests, of course. Uh, it's not my first PyQ5 app, but I like to go um, step by steps uh, on those streams just so, so everybody can follow. Okay, client, what do we have? Oh, we have a window. Let me put that back in the focus. That's that's it. Thank you very much. See you. 
And so yeah, well, that's um, that's a basic window. Cool, that worked. Um, what are we going to do now? We are going to so in the in the um, the, the the application we're going to have on the client side. So on the Raspberry Pi side, we're going to have uh, I think it's five by three, so five columns by three rows of push buttons, probably. Um, and given that the seven inch touch screen uh, for the Raspberry Pi is 800 by 480, I think, um, that gives us 160 pixels um, uh, for, the, uh, for the icons. Uh, 160 by 160. So, I guess it's time to add some buttons. I accidentally changed the scene on OBS. That's what's happened when you focus OBS and press some random keys on your keyboard. Um, yes, so... Um, we're going to arrange our buttons in a grid, um, five by three. So, by Q5 or Q5 gives us some something to arrange our widgets like that. So it's called the layout. If you uh, have a look at the documentation, you will see that there are many kinds of layouts. Uh, some are um, arrange the uh, widgets uh, from top to bottom. Some from left to right. Some are um, uh, grids. Uh, the grid is, is what we're going to use now. Um, there's, there are many layouts, and um, you can even uh, design your own layout, layouts. So, um, but for now, we're going to use a grid layout because it just makes sense. Um, it's our interface is going to be a grid of buttons. So, let's define a layout which is going to be a Q grid layout. Okay. Um, for now, for this first test, that's all we need. We're we're, we're gonna use the grid layout, but we're only gonna put one button, uh, one button in there. Um, what else do we have to do? We need to set this layout. Uh, yes, on the window. So window set layout layout. Okay. So far, so good. We haven't done a lot of stuff. And we're going to add, we're going to add a push button inside this layout. So let's define that. We're going to use a Q push button. There we go. So what does that text? Is it either apparent or none? We can pass none. It will use the the window as the parent. We can have a text. Oh, we can have an icon, which is oh, I forgot to switch my. Uh, my scene on OBS. So there we go. Um, layout is grid layout. Window dot set layout to set the layout, and then we are going to define a push button. And that what I was showing is this the tooltip, and we can use an icon and a text uh, as parameters to the uh, Q push button. So I think this second one is just a text. Yes, it's just a text. So let's try that first uh, we'll go to an X in there why not yes why not and then we need to add this button to our grid so layout dot add widget and we can just add a widget or we can uh, we can uh, add the widget and a row and a colon or, uh, or a lot of stuff what we need is this we need to add this button row zero colon zero so that's the top left corner of the grid but given that it's going to be the only button it doesn't really matter let's see there we go if i can bring that back into focus there we go we have a push button. Oh, but it doesn't expand. It does expand uh, this direction, but not this direction. 
So we need to fix that because even though we're going to be on a Raspberry Pi and we're going to have um, uh, the, the, the window will, will be fixed, what we what we want is this button, all those buttons to be 160, 160 pixels by 160 pixels. And that is uh, obviously not the case. So we're going to try and convince uh, Qt5 that this button is actually um, 160 by 160. How do we do that? Hmm, I have, I have uh, no idea, actually. <laughs> Um, but what I know we can do is force the size of the icon inside uh, the button. So let's try and do that. So instead of having, having a text here, we want to have a, an icon. So what's, what's that? That's the third one, I think. It needs an icon and a text, and an icon is a Q icon. Okay, we can do that. We can use... Q icon here. What does Q icon take as uh, parameters? A pix map doesn't help. Another icon that doesn't help. A file name that's promising. Uh, or uh, some stuff. So file name is what we want. And I happen to have some uh, icons in the asset folder. I got a button, which is an ugly thing that I designed myself, and a webcam.png, which is something I've downloaded from the internet. And because I have to um, to attribute this icon, that's what I'm going to do. I got it from the flaticon.com website, and it's something by Pixel Perfect. Uh, so thank you, Pixel Perfect, Perfect, for this icon that I'm going to use as a demo in this um, tutorial, in this video. Okay, so this thing is located here. I believe I just have to give the, the name. Uh, what's wrong? No, oh, yes, it needs also a text. Uh, so we're going to give an empty text. And what we've got now. Now we've got this. Okay. We do know that this, e I do know that this icon is 250 by 250 pixels. It's still not 160 and that's what we want. We want 160 by 160. So let's um, help Qt to achieve this. So we're going to do button dot that icon size and it needs a size so that's Q size and Q size needs width and height so 160 by 160 okay let's see Ta -da! we do have a an icon okay I want to do something even though we're not going to use that later on because what we're gonna have is a fixed size window but I would like this button to actually expand and when we have multiple buttons they will all expand so in order to do that we need to tell the button that its size policy is to is to policy the Q size policy is it yes dot policy dot expanding yes that's the one we need and then we need it to expand and there we have it so the button expands but probably not the icon which is good that's what we want right so that's for one button. Now, if we wanted to have five by three, 
five colons by three rows, we would then have to repeat the same process. Let's try and do just that. So four row in range of three or column in range of five and then we need to add that to the layout and that will probably be row and column how about that Ta -da! well that's a lot of webcam buttons Actually, maybe 160 is uh, is a lot. I don't know. It, maybe it's not that that big. Oh, I can see a problem. I can see a problem, but we we'll, we will we will try and fix that problem later on. So let's first of all let's get um, that app as if it was running on a Raspberry Pi screen. So as I said, uh, it's a um, fixed size. The screen of the Raspberry Pi is 800 by 480 pixels. So let's say that this window is fixed at 800 and, uh, by 480. And, and here you can see the problem I was uh, referring to. The problem is that we have margins so do we want margins and if we do can we control the size of the margins and if we do that then our icon needs to be smaller huh huh uh, so the layout is responsible for the margin, I think. Let's see, what do we have here? Uh, margins. We have set content margins. Left, top, right, and bottom. And there's another constructor which takes margin. So left, <coughs> left top right and bottom so let's first let's see if we put zero everywhere what does that change okay so that's only the outside of the of the layout uh, if i remember correctly the inside is called spacing and that will give us a number of pixels between each buttons yes so that works that works now the question is do we want do we want both basically we do we want spacing and and merging and then we have smaller buttons or do we keep the margin and the spacing at zero and then we use um we, we, we somehow manage to make the icons look good on the screen i am uh, i am torn uh, and if I was doing that, you would see much better because it was not in focus. It was outside of the OBS capture zone. Uh, my, my guess is we want margin because then we have the border here for free. So we're going to have to do some calculations. Uh, let's put 10, 10, 10, and 10 pixels here. And so now, on our 800 pixel uh, pixels 
wide uh, layout, we've lost 20 pixels. And oh, that's that's not gonna that's not gonna work, will it? Oh, let's see. If I if I add five pixels spacing, what happens? Is it five? Do we need five or do we need ten? We need ten. We need ten pixels. So that value is the the not the number of pixels above and above uh below left and right of the buttons it's really the amount of pixels between two elements which means now we had 800 pixels and now we have lost uh we have lost 10 20 30 40 50 60 so this is now 740 uh, so let's write that here Seven hundred and forty, and now we have we had four hundred and eighty, and we've lost ten, twenty, thirty, forty. So we still have four hundred and forty. Is that right? Uh, did we lose six here? One, two, three, four, five, six. Yes. But the problem is now that. 740 divided by 5 equals uh, 158, is it? Uh, no, 48, yes, 148 and 440 divided by 3 actually it doesn't work uh, let me let me bring the mighty help yes. um so let's just check that i met, didn't make a mistake but 440 divided by, divided by three that doesn't work Doo -doo -doo. so how, ma how many pixels do i need remove so that I can have I can have a normal number of pixels for the buttons uh, I'm, I'm, I, don't, <laughs> I don't like doing math like that so let's say we're gonna have 145 pixels for the buttons times 3 that's 435 and if I remove that from 480 that's 45, and uh, can I have 45 in one, two, three, four, four rows? No, I can't. I cannot. I cannot have that. Okay, so let's say it's 146 times three, 480 minus that, and that divides by, oh, no, that doesn't. One, two, three, four, no, that, that doesn't, that doesn't. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, so I count it. 147 times 3. 480. No, that's not going to work either. Uh, 148 times 3. 480 minus that. That divides by, by 4. Yes. So if we had 148 pixel in 8, that would work for the for the 8. eight. For the width, for the width, we... oh, oh! I just realized something that I, I should have checked that before. Uh, we can have buttons uh, by um, 148 pixels by 148 pixels because if we do 148 times five, no, 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 uh, no, 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 that's not. so. So, to make things easier, we're going to stay with zero margin and zero spacing. And, and, and we're going to then have, um, well, 
we're gonna have to live with that and make our own um, pretty icons. I don't see how we can do anything else. Uh, because uh, if I go back quickly, I'm, I just, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna let that go just yet. So 148 times five equals equals. I've lost the mighty calculator. Let's bring it back. Uh, 148 times five. So we had 800. So we have 60 left, and we have uh, one. We have four division. Plus two borders, so that's six. That's ten. Yes, that was ten. Uh, set content. Yeah, but it's, no, it's not gonna work. The spacing is not gonna let me do it. Or maybe I should cheat. Hmm. No. Okay. Forget about it. We'll stay like that, and we're gonna uh, just um, do stuff. So now that we have those icons, they're uh, granted they're all the same, but you know that's gonna change. In the future now i need to you know have something when i click on that button so i um, how do we do that i don't i don't remember how we do that so i'm gonna go and do some research by q5 q push button add event something like that Buttons and events. Okay, I don't want to watch the video. I want to um, do that. Button that clicked that connect click. And the object oriented program implementation. What does that do? Okay, we can have a. Yeah, it's the same. It's just click.connect and then the name of the handler. Well, let's do this. We can do this. We know we can do this. So button.connect. Nope. Click. Dot, dot connect. Is it, was it click connect or connect? Click, click connect. Okay. Um, then... Uh, Click button. Yes, click button like that. Uh, now we need to define this function. Dave. Click button. Uh, probably takes some arguments, but we're going to ignore that. It's not at all how you define a function in Python. That's much better. Print. Is it working? Nope, it's not. Function name click button is not defined. Uh, click button, yes. All right. Clicked. Cool. It's working. But we need to know what we clicked. Uh, how can I? Uh, how can I? How can I add user data to that? Or, yeah, actually, what I want to know which row and column the button was when I clicked it. So let's go back to our beloved Google and um, Q push button add uh, user data. I to set user data for a Q widget. Apparently, I have already looked for that. I might be looking for Q object set property, which is, of course, inherited by Q widget. Uh, Q widget that set property. Q object that set property. What does that mean? Then, const try it once. Start star name, const Q variant a value. Sets the value of the object's name property to value. If the property is defined in the class using Q-property and true is returned on success and for so on. If the property is not defined, uh, therefore not listed in the meta object, it is added as a dynamic property and false is returned. 
Hmm, that's interesting. So, button that set property and row and row and button set property column column. And now, if we go here, uh, hold on a second. Click. Clicked just sends me a checked Boolean. How do I know which button I clicked? Ah, I think I know how I'm going to do that. Uh, I'm going to use a partial. I think it's going to work. The only thing is, I don't remember how to do partials. So we're going to go back to Google and we're going to look at Python partial function. Funk tool, that's what we want. We want funk tool dot partial. Partial, yes, funk tool dot partial. And if I remember my um, Python experience from funk tools import partial, now we can do, we can say that instead of calling Clicked button, we're going to uh, connect partial the the, 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 the the click button button. Okay, and now if we come here, we have a button which is a Q push button, and then we have a checked which is a boolean. I think. Let's see. Button. Button. Clicked. Check is checked. Checked is checked. Fingers crossed. Oh, it's working. So if I click multiple times on that button, it's button AF0. Over here. Uh, yes. I, I, for a moment, I thought I didn't uh, switch the scene. Okay, so if I click that button, it's button AF0. And if I click on another button, this one is E50. And so we know which button we've clicked. So that's fine. So now we, we have the button. We can button that get property mm, no property property uh, row we're going to do that row equals that column equals bit button dot property uh, column column and now we can print row row column column Do, do, do. Uh, look, row two, column four, yes, row zero, column zero, zero one, zero two, one two, one one, one two. Okay, it's working, it is working. Nice, nice. Um, what's the next step? So the next step will be to have the client ask the server for um, a list of icons, a list of buttons. So the server would return... Uh, return what? Return a, an array of bytes, I guess. So my... My next step here will be 
to replace that so loading an icon the icon from the file uh, i'm going to try and load the icon from something else maybe uh, an array of bytes or something so we can have a pix map i don't know what that is but we're going to, we're going to have a look at that another icon is probably not what we are looking for the file name is what we have now but we want to change that uh, an icon engine probably not what we need a variant maybe maybe not so the pix map seems to be what we will, we need um let's see Cubix map what does that need um width and eight a q size a file name of course we don't want that xpm list of string okay Another pix map, we don't want that. Hmm, it's probably not that. Well, what do we do when we don't know how to do something? We ask our dear friend Google. Other search engines are available. Um, load new icon from bytes. Pix map. Load from data. Uh, okay. Format here is string ETL like PNG or something similar. Uh, okay. 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 So that pix map here is just what I did. And then pm that load from data. Yes, okay, text byte. Oh, great. That's what I want. Yeah, okay. Oh, I was looking at the uh, the documentation. Okay. So we need a, a bytes, uh, a series of bytes, and then a format. Okay. We can, we can try and do that. Uh, we can do that with with uh, open uh, assets assets slash web cam dot png. Okay, now I need to find the correct. Hmm. So that's read binary. Maybe. As if. No. Uh, no. Not, no, 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 no. That's not bad at all. Um, yeah. I've, I've forgotten how to put a file in Python. Python. Uh, I'm going to keep this one. Python. Read. Bytes. From. File. Uh, yes, that was what I wanted to do, but why does it go? I might have forgotten some imports, very important ones. Uh, why can't I remember how to do stuff? Open. Yes. Uh, it would help if I could right properly okay we've opened that as f f dot read 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 in size hmm. uh out read bets from five and save it uh Okay, so read will read everything, apparently. Okay, I need to brush up my... to, 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 to yeah, work on my um, 
IOs on Python because um, those are the things I always forget. So b b equals f dot read maybe that returns bytes. So pix map uh, load from data b and png. And now that we have that, we build the icon from. Uh, let's just put that uh, as a comment here. And we are going to use the fix map here. So that's PM. And uh, yeah, that too. What we could do is that. So we can close the file as soon as we have the, the bytes. And also, uh, because, well, that's okay. Uh, but because we're using the same file every time, we could uh, get that part outside of the loop. But then when we do that for real, uh, we're going to receive bytes. Well, it doesn't hurt if we do stuff properly. Okay, let's see. Ta-da! That worked. That worked, okay. So in future implementation of this thing, uh, we are going to we are going to load those icons from the server. Let's see. Is this person has this person made some other cool stuff? Uh, what what kind of cool icon can we get? Something that would uh, make sense for OBS, of course. Uh, where did we get this icon from? Uh, uh, is it from... A pack? Yes, that's this one, I think. Work office and meeting. Ah, I need to register. But I don't want that. Um... What can we use in OBS? That would be very cool. Maybe this one. This one would be like a button on the stream, yeah, a stream deck to turn on the light. That would connect to some home automation. Uh, let's grab the 256 pixel version of that and search. Okay, search.png. I can I can do that. Thank you again, Pixel Perfect. Put your icon on flat icon, flat icon, um, potato, potato, and um, .com. Thank you again uh, for providing those um, for free for us to enjoy. So I have a search here. Uh, let's uh, just you know grab one uh, at random. Uh, so now we're going to have to put that back in here and then we can do like if um row times column modulo to is it modulo or is it that a uh, the reminder of the division i don't know if that equals zero then we use the webcam else we use the search search.png okay huh it's not exactly what i wanted but i'm okay <laughs> i'm okay i can see we have some different icons here and uh and uh, which means we can send those nice icons. Oh, we can actually design our own icons and uh, have that in the um, in the Streamberry client. And then when we click on a button, we are going to send the data back to the server. And then the server will um, take uh, whatever necessary action. Uh, respond to our input um 
How can I do that after? Oh, I'm gonna have to read the... Well, I guess I'm not gonna start that tonight. I might do another stream tomorrow. Um, depending on, you know, life and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, we have, we have buttons. We have buttons, we have icons, we can use uh, pre-made icons or we can design our own. I am not a designer, but uh, maybe I'm gonna, maybe I'm going to try and do something. Um, something fun. Um, let me go back to the uh, webcam viewer chat just in case someone comes in. Um, yeah, what I'm thinking is that we get, I, I, I think we can have at least two kinds of buttons. Uh, well, uh, I need a I need a, a, another overlay where I can have like. Uh, the uh, screen here instead of the chat and um, me just um, uh, on the side. But anyway, let's go back to the um, full screen for a moment. Um, so those buttons here, I think we can have at least two kinds of buttons. Uh, so that's going to be the first kind, which is going to be a push button like this one. So when I press on that button, it sends a, a, a command that doesn't need a, a response like for example switch scene uh clicking on a, on this button might switch the scene we may not want any uh, feedback uh, but for example the start and stop streaming buttons they could very well have like a a, a red square that could be a, a very a bright red when the recording is on so and it would be another kind of button that this one would require a a response from the the server and um, I, I was wondering maybe we could add a status line so when we start recording it actually writes start recording and when we switch scene it can it could write the name of the scene that we would have a feedback on the stream day on the <laughs> streamberry or any clients for that matter because we we could write as many clients as we want um yeah we could have a, a status line that says um the scene we are we are using or um or maybe we can have a special screen with status because it could be also interesting to know which profile is selected uh, in OBS, so we know where we where we are streaming. Are we streaming to Twitch or YouTube or both, or uh, are we streaming to Restream IO or uh, all profiles? You know, I have many profiles in my OBS to send uh, that to either my ch my channel or the T R Grey Hot uh, Twitch channel, which is my Star Trek podcast can uh, watch every Wednesday when we record that live or uh, go head over to tierwehot.org and subscribe to the RSS feed. Um, yeah, so that's that's pretty much all I wanted to show. I think I, I took about an hour for something that uh, probably could have taken like 10 minutes, but hey, I like to take my time and uh, expand stuff and uh, test stuff. So, well, thank you for watching this video whenever you are doing that on whichever platform you are doing that. Um, follow me, twitch.tv slash frenchguych if you want to be notified when I do one of those uh, streams. You can also join me on Twitter uh, at frenchguych over there too. I'm on Telegram on the the, the best place you can find me is the um, Maker's Corner Telegram group, which is another one of my podcasts. T.me slash Maker's Corner. Uh, I, I have forgotten. I, <laughs> I always forgot the name of my channels. So let me check that. Uh, so that's uh, so that it is um, T.me slash Maker's Corner pod 
or if you're in, uh, if you're into Star Trek and uh, a Star Trek fan, uh, you can join me on my um, T or Grey Hot Telegram channel, which is t.me slash t-e-g-h podcast. Uh, that's it. Yeah, I think uh, I'm on Discord and stuff like that. But the easiest way would be Twitter, I think. Um, you can ping me on Twitter or join me on Telegram, and then I can give you all the other uh, ways to contact me on the different platforms. Thank, thank you for watching this video. Um, I will be back on Twitch uh, soon. Um, maybe tomorrow, uh, August 6th, which is actually today because we're just past midnight um, or uh, during the weekend. Uh, but of course, that doesn't even matter if you're watching this video in a month or so. so. Anyway, we, I will be back very soon. Thank you again for watching. Uh, subscribe, follow, uh, click on the bells if there's, if there's a bell on, on the platform you are. And I will see you very soon. Cheers.